So today we have with us Tuba Masood, who's been a journalist for uh, over 15 years, as she says. She is multimedia journalist. She's a podcaster. In fact, she's a podcaster. She's, they, they started uh, a podcast called, um, what was it called? Let me Notes on a Scandal. Yeah, Notes on a Scandal. And I think you did a fantastic one on Mustafa Zedi, if I that remember. That is the Mustafa Zedi one, yeah. Yeah, right? Because yeah. Uh, it happened when I was growing up and I remember... And he was my father's friend because he was a poet, oh, really? of poet. and um, I loved his poetry mm -hmm. even when I was like 14 around that time, 14 or 15. And uh, I still remember the newspaper headlines and I remember the sensation mm -hmm. it created and I remember the kind of reporting it had. I mean, from then onwards, yep. I knew what the media was always up against. It was it was horrible. So yeah, so so Tuba has done that, and then also based on the uh, same uh, podcast series, you and Sabah Imtiaz have done. I've written a book called Yes, Society, right? yes, it's going to be out later this year. Society Girl, yeah. and yeah, so that was that will be kind of exciting to read. Mm -hmm. And currently, you are communications. Um, manager at the bad lab, the bad lab yep. yep tuba um as an introduction i mean you know that it's a project on you know how do you combat online sexualized violence mm -hmm. um, especially against women and uh, what is it uh, that uh, we can do in our own capacities and as a group to bring out a strong messages uh, that uh, this is not on mm -hmm. so since you are from a generation that is more that has been more into internet uh, and uh, uh, social media of course how do you define uh, sexualized violence i mean in your own understanding so i think when you're talking about <coughs> online sexualized violence it's very much about the kind of language uh, that's being used and what photographs uh, are being commented on. It comes in many different forms because of social media. So, you know, as you mentioned, the Mustafa Zaidi case, as we were discussing earlier, the one thing Sabah and I have often gone back to is, if this case happened in the age of social media, how would it have happened? And a big thing in the case were the nude pamphlets that Mustafa had printed. So, you know, it's also a case, case of revenge porn and like online disturbances in Hori and and I feel like it would have blown everything away. And, you know, automatically, Shanaz would have become, you know, vilified, the guilty party, the bad person, the buri audit that she did become. And yeah. I think a great example of that in today's age is what happened with the Misha Shafi case. Yeah. Right? And the kind of threats that she was getting online. Those are just a part and parcel of being a woman online because you are inevitably exposed to uh, sexualized violence. There's so many times I remember when... Um, Orchid started, which is back in 2000, early 2000s, you know, people would slide into your DMs, leave sexualized comments on photos. And how old was I at that time? Maybe like 10, 12. And then Facebook, people would slide into your DMs. Like, you know, it would be older men. It would be men, you, men or boys you knew. And they would re leave like really like raunchy, disgusting messages. And it's the same thing with Instagram. And if you don't respond, it just keeps getting violent and more abusive and more violent and more abusive where it eventually ends up on rape threats or death threats so that to me is what uh, online sexualized violence looks like and it's a very very real thing and if anyone is silly enough to deny it and pretend like it doesn't exist in pakistan i mean they're they're as the jazz gen z says they're in dilulu yeah no, that's true the kind of reporting Mustafa said these cases mm -hmm. got at that time or the other such cases. And I always compare uh, the case of Nina Aziz, mm -hmm. uh, the girl who got murdered in mm -hmm. 1998 and then her headless body was found. Yeah, I remember. So, and we have the whole folder of uh, of the press clippings and the kind of filth that, that, that mm -hmm. there was in all the newspapers across board, except for Dawn. I think it was that was the only sane paper even at that time. All the English and Urdu newspapers had gone just just wild, like mm -hmm. writing about a woman, young woman living alone. Yep. Her parents were still in the 
the neighborhood and why was she living alone, that she was drinking, that she was into multiple sexual partners, you know, what, whatever. And I would wonder that how this case would have been taken had it happened today. Because the same happened to... Uh, Noor. Noor. And uh, the kind of uh, comments that she got, mm -hmm. she was like, even they, they don't spare women who have been murdered and always blaming her. Yeah, to I mean, there was that also that other case, um, you know, that woman whose husband bashed her head with weights yeah. in their bathroom. I can't remember. Yeah, her yeah, name. yeah. But, uh, Sarah, Sarah or something. yeah, yeah, but you yeah, know, I was uh, reading up on that when it happened because these cases, like, I, you know, as a woman who lives in Pakistan, they affect me personally and mentally because it's like, you know, honestly, any day that could be anyone you know, and that could be you as yeah. well. So when I was reading about her case, like the kind of comments people had left were like, yeah, you know, that was expected. She was his second wife, you know, she broke a house. And I was like, how is that what you're thinking about? You know, the fact that this woman was murdered in such a brutal manner. And like, you know, to say that, you know, she had it coming. It's the same like when I was, when I used to be in the newsroom, we would get these Karokari cases that would come. And, you know, like, I don't even know if they take them anymore, but it would literally be six lines. And mm -hmm. it would always be that, you know, this girl ran away with this boy and, you know, then they were killed. And I was like, the onus or the blame in such a case is always on the woman. Like, what did the woman do? Did she pick the man up and take him away? Is she the one who planned all this? It's it's not, right? And and when you look at this online, it becomes even more bizarre because, I mean, there was this uh, model who would put up a photograph of herself in a sleeveless outfit. And the vile comments... I was just like, how how can anyone sleep at night? Like, you know, how can you say that to another human being? <clears throat> but I feel like, you know, they're protected because they're saying it in an online space. What people don't realize is that what's offline or what's online can very easily just become real offline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it can be a real life situation and, 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 mm -hmm. and it does lead to real life situation a lot of times. You know, the whole... Uh, concept of putting the blame on women or you know victim blaming it's it's been there i mean whether it's a case of mm -hmm. karokari whether it is a case of uh, any kind of uh, other uh, relationship it's always the woman who's uh, made to be yeah. you know look like a vampire actually truly uh, so uh, once we uh, did uh, sort of a con counter narrative to these headlines, uh, mm -hmm. so we said, okay, let's, you know, reverse it. So uh, we said, Ek mard, ki maa, no, no mm -hmm. ek ki ke and people didn't actually like it. I can imagine. Uh, because we were using this uh, during a training and obviously, mm -hmm. you know, the media is all male. Yeah. You, you have three women and 20 to 30 men. Yeah. But ma'am, this is headline. This is the 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 headline. This that actually changed uh, because, uh, and I can very proudly take the credit, mm -hmm. give the credit to Ox actually. We have been monitoring for 10 years after 98 and mm -hmm. 2008. And that Kumari Ma and that Guna, that had actually uh, been sort of minimized and replaced by a a body of newly born was found. No, Zaida, but she mm -hmm. uh, pai gai. So at least not all, of course, you can't sensitize mm -hmm. the entire media. But somewhere, our you know, bantering actually happened. Yeah, because and that's you, it's you know, so important. Bantering it in their brains that okay, you mm -hmm. know, this is not on. This is not on. But coming back to social media, Gee. you know, um, as a young woman. How often do you see other young women or even women leaving the space because of the threats they get or even oh, I... the conversation that goes on? It's not personal, but it's there. There are, I mean, myself included, like, you know, in January, I left Instagram 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not very active on Twitter anymore as well because just to the kind of comments and things people were saying in my DMs, it wasn't um, sexualized, but it was very hurtful and hateful. And I had no idea where it was coming from. Like I'm assuming that they went through my feed and they found something and it was something that uh, wasn't liked. But I know a lot of girls, a lot of my own friends, a lot of journalists who have actively made the effort of leaving social media because they can't deal with comments. Hmm. Like it just gets too much and it's too, it's taking up too much mental bandwidth. Uh, an alternative way of uh, how I've seen people deal with it, uh, especially people who are younger than me, is that they have Finsta accounts. So they have fake Insta accounts um, where like, you know, they have one which is public and one that's just for friends. And both of these accounts are private accounts. So my account, for example, on Instagram, I joined again a couple of months ago, um, is a public account. So when it's a public account, I think it, people think it's you're okay to comment on and you're okay to reach out to directly because it's a public account. So you're, like nothing is sacred or private. Uh, but I think a lot of people over time have turned their accounts private and they've <clears throat> opted for the Finsta account because it's easier to manage and like, you know, that's one way of avoiding some kind of, you know, uh, violence or scrutiny like that. But again, so, like it's still not a safe space. Yeah, but then uh, resorting to fake accounts, is that the answer? I mean- No, it's uh, not. You know, you, you, you are, you, you all, one knows that this is not the right thing to do, but then this is only the safe thing that mm -hmm. you can think of. Which is uh, so sad. Exactly. Which is just, <laughs> so, um, you know, how many young people do you see, men and women, uh, engaging uh, with each other on this issue that there is online sexualized violence and that it's not on? I mean, what's, what's um, the consensus? I think it's more young women uh, mm -hmm. who talk about it, like definitely among my, my friends, my colleagues. It is something that we talk about because it's something that one of us or some of us face a lot, right? Um, I remember there was this uh, really strange thing that happened to a friend of mine who lives in Karachi. She had taken a Kareem ride. Mm. And that guy, because he saw her name on the ride, right? He then found her on Instagram. And then he started messaging her on Instagram and obscene messages about her figure, the kind of clothes she's wearing, and she was just like, how did he even get this? Like, why was he able to find this? She left Instagram. But then he found her on Twitter, doing the same kind of things to her on Twitter, and then on Facebook as well, till she had to actually report him. Hmm. So, I mean, and it's it's something like, you know, like a Kareem or an InDrive or something everyone uses so commonly. Like, I take it twice a day every day to get to work and back. Uh, but, I mean, just the fact that, you know, he was act actively, like, stalking her, clearly finding her. And then messaging her and like obscene messages. I can't even tell you. Like she sent us screenshots, and you were just like, "What is this guy on? Like, how how does he think it's okay to send anyone this message?" And coming to the messages and the language, I mean, uh, we are uh, like Ux is in the process of uh, putting together a compendium of words mm -hmm. in Urdu and Punjabi, and then translate them. And my team is having a real hard time just mm -hmm. reading those messages over and over and. I can imagine. Because uh, once when I shared a very, I think, mild version of what mm. actually happens, one of my colleagues was shocked. She said that, you know, I never knew that this happens. I said, yeah, because uh, you don't read those messages. Yeah. I, I read it by, by <coughs> because my work demands that, that I, I be aware of these messages. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, and this is just a very small incident that I've uh, shared with you. But now that they are actually looking at all the words, it is so disturbing. I mean, it, it starts with, uh, you know, sexual violence. It starts with the women's body parts. Mm -hmm. it, it goes to, I mean, they can go to any length. I mean, even when two men are uh, trying to argue, they will bring in a woman. Yeah. You know, you because a woman is... Uh, um, you know, there there are so many swear words that are based on a woman's anatomy yeah. or based on your mother and sister. Yeah. And my friends and I, like, you know, we always wonder, like, why is it always the woman? Yeah. Why is it not the man? Yeah. Why is it not male parts? Like, yeah. why why is it always the woman? And, like, you know, like, the woman eventually just gets ruined that way, right? 
बिकॉज नथिंग इज सीक्रेट एंड आई आप एक जगह कहते हैं कि लाइक यू नो वो माँ है माँ के कदमों के नीचे जन्नत होती है अपनी बीवी का ये दर्जा होता है बेटियों का ये दर्जा होता है बट आप वो चीज़ मेंटेन ही नहीं कर रहे हैं तो लाइक आई मीन वट्स द पॉइंट आप उसको खुद उसकी बेजती करें उसको खुद जलील कर रहे हैं वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग आई वुड एक्चुअली लाइक टू ब्रिंग इन इज द होल थिंग अबाउट इंसल कल्चर एंड एंड रूटेज I did not realize how massive an issue that has become, because there are all these young boys who are now going online, and they are saying all this random stuff that this guy Andrew Tate is saying, and he's so misogynistic. You know, he's not even Pakistani, but all these like, I think fourteen boys who are fourteen plus they worship him, and it's astonishing to me because this this man is literally spewing hate against women. Like you know, okay, women shouldn't do this. Why is your Why is your mother working? Why is your wife working? Why is your sister doing this? Why are they wearing clothes like this? Oh, this isn't allowed. This isn't that. That man went to jail for human trafficking. Hmm. And I was just like, how? Why is he a role model for people? But he is. And subsequent to that, like there are so many Pakistanis who have embraced this whole insult thing, and now they have their own YouTube videos. where like you know they are preaching uh, young men on how the women in their lives should be and then these men like you know they they take it forward but they take it forward in a negative way where it's constantly like policing women and they feel like you know it's totally okay to police women i don't know like if you saw this viral clip it was a reporter yeah. who was interviewing yes. someone and the guy was and like why aren't you why aren't you wearing your dupatta why isn't you like you know why are you wearing that battle he got i mean I, i'm a... I'm amazed at that. Yeah. yeah, she had the courage and presence of mind to say that you know you shouldn't even be touching me. Exactly. Exactly. How how many of us would do that? You know that is the question. I mean, most of us would just either walk away, or maybe you know let the tupatta be on us. Because exactly. Because one of my producers, uh, way back, I think in the. Mm-hmm. It was like fifteen, twenty years ago. She was getting down from a wagon, and uh, an older man told her, and she had shot her, that you know, um, beta, you should be covering your head. And so she and she said, you know, chacha, you shouldn't even be looking at me. But it's it's you know it's like you know such few of yeah. us who have presence of mind or who have the courage. Uh, how do we then? bring in this courage and the whole narrative to be changed you know like women need to tell men how they have to behave so i think it's obviously not something that's going to happen overnight right it's something yeah, that you have to consciously work towards like uh, this one time by the way uh, during the last elections the 2018 elections i had to interview someone mm-hmm. who was affiliated with a religious political party and throughout the interview he refused to look at me so i was sitting in on one side and he was sitting in the other side just staring at a wall and i was like you know i, I was so confused and, but i was also so infuriated but i also found it so hilarious i was like you know the like, false modesty aapki like is kya hoga because aapne jab aap mujhse phone pe baat kar rahe the ya message kar rahe the ya good morning aur juma mubarak kar rahe the us waqt to aapko kuch masla nahi tha mm-hmm. ab aapko masla ho raha hai but hey but us may be like you know like i think there are times where you can push back and but the problem is you know with the push back as well like i feel personally that today it is not that safe a world to push back in mm-hmm. because of how armed people are the kind of access that they have to things like i think it's very easy for me to say that you know women should push back women should fight back but i'm also very aware of the fact that if they do there's a possibility that when they do do, do that push back someone can pull a gun out someone can get them picked up someone can actually go get them raped and killed mm. and it's really sad that you know that is unfortunately the reality 10 years ago i feel like because i was also younger i was also i i was a hothead so i could have like you know i would do a lot of badtamizi like i would you know agar police wala tan karta tha ya kuch karta tha like you know what answer back but now i'm just like what like i have to think about it right and mm. i feel like a lot of girls now a lot of women now like they do think about these things because safety has become i think more a glaring issue it's much more in your face than it was 10 years ago so um safety of course is an issue mm-hmm. 
the threats are very real yeah. from death to rape threats. So what do women do then just sit at home? Because home is also not safe. There's domestic yeah. violence there. There's incest there. So what do we do? I think we should all go off to a village <laughs> somewhere <laughs> far, far away <laughs> or, or an island uh, with good weather. No, I think one of the things that I think we've been working on and thinking about a lot and talking about a lot is that this changing the mindset. I think public service messages are very important. I think it's very important to actually take ownership and for government bodies to take ownership. Yep. Because if they don't actually ownership or active interest, they can't do anything. They can just sit in the room and workplace harassment ke posters. Laganay se, Workplace harassment is not going to be able to do this. You can't 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 do this. You can either from someone who someone people look up to mm-hmm. and i feel like that is something that in pakistan at least like we are severely lacking there there's a lack of role models even for women like i mean there's, there's like a handful of women you can look up to mm-hmm. because you don't see them out there yeah. if you do like you know they're either too high a level mm-hmm. um or like they're too behind the scenes that you don't actually get to see them or interact with them so I think, you know, something like that actually needs to be done. And I do think that the government needs to take ownership of these things. It does need to make an impact, right? It does need to have that public service message where it says, like, you know, women should be allowed in public spaces. You know, I right. was, I constantly complain about this. I see more women in Punjab than I do in Sindh. Mm-hmm. And in Punjab, you actually see women cleaning the streets. You see them at stores. You see them at, you know, restaurants serving and stuff like that. You don't actually see that much in Sindh. You don't see that much in Karachi. Mm-hmm. And it always surprises me. And I feel like in Punjab, like, you know, women have more access <clears throat> from different income groups, have more access to a mobile phone than they do in Sindh and Balochistan. And, but then like, there's so many things in Punjab that are also so backward compared to the rest of the country mm-hmm. that I, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, you know, there's no connect. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like you said that, you know, there has to be uh, some kind of, uh, policies mm-hmm. or mechanism put in by the government uh, there has to be a political will for that yeah. actually there has to be a political will and then uh, you talked about public service uh, messages uh, those are so much needed and not just mm-hmm. for women I think a lot of them should also be addressed to young boys men on how to behave mm-hmm. uh, every phone that you pick up and you call has should have a message on you know how should yeah. a woman behave or a man behave? Uh, because uh, I think that is one way of telling the parents also. Mm-hmm. That, uh, you don't always have to, you know, like we always said that <clears throat> you don't have to tell a girl to not to go out. You have to ask your son to behave. Yeah, behave. I mean, I'll give you a small example. Yesterday, a number is calling me. And when I'm talking to you, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, really? But what I do now is when something like this comes up, I automatically like, I'm going to PTA and complain to the PTA. Or if I'm online, I'm going to complain to the PTA. But in this mechanism, I feel like I have access to it because I know about it. But if people are aware of these things, and they are aware of public service messaging, that it can be done, 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 I think it would help for people. Yeah, because a lot of people don't even know that these exactly uh, cases are there where you can lodge a complaint, mm-hmm. where you, you can at least feel that you have mm-hmm. you know spoken about what's yeah. happening. Um, I remember then when when uh, CLIs you know call identity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember those uh, on your uh, phones, and they would be crank calls at night. Mm-hmm. I would always put down the number and call the next day. And see who the person was or report. Yeah. Uh, because uh, until unless you did that, you know, um, I remember once there was this call that came middle of the night. And when I would pick up, it would be a boy. 
and when my husband would pick it up it would be a girl so i know <laughs> the number and then i called i said you know who are you people they they, they actually got scared they no no we're just students we're just oh you know like fun and i said whether Puchi, we, why is that fun ab 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 padh rahe the raat ko jo ki combined studies ka matlab ye hota hai ki you wake up in the middle of the night and you know make crank calls yeah so, but uh, you know you you really have to uh, be proactive actually actually of course uh, to uh, be able to say uh, you know or call out uh, you know shout out for that mm-hmm. matter so so tuba tell me um, what way forward do you see i mean you've spoken about a lot of things but uh, you know um, what way forward do you see for social media spaces to be a safer ones for women i mean what 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 is it that we can do so i think uh, it would be important to work with communities and societies like you know let's say there's the digital rights foundation uh, mm. there's media matters there are a lot of places i think people need to come together women need to come together and like you know actually present some policies to the pta to the government also to like you know their local mnas and mpas okay this is what needs to be done and i think this is a cause that you know the women should band together on and mm-hmm. uske andar like you know basic policy honi chahiye ki bhai aap aurat ke khilaf ye cheez online nahi keh sakte agar aapne kaha tha like you know ye fine lag sakta hai aapke upar ye aapko punishment lag sakti hai kyunki i think jab tak iske aap is tarah ki cheeze nahi karenge aap usko strictly deal nahi karenge ye cheeze nahi rukengi i mean i'm sure like jab ye aa bhi jayengi people will find a way around it and they'll be like oh it wasn't me kyunki ab to deep fakes aur ye pata nahi kya kya aa gaya but i do feel like it's important that you know other women who have some influence who can make a difference like you know that they do get behind this um and i really do feel like this is something that should be taken to like a provincial and then national assembly level because that's the only way this this change can happen right like it has to be legislated and then it has to be implemented so if we take it to the assemblies it's predominantly male do you think we'll have any we have any i think it's <laughs> I, I hope I hope so I hope so because I also think about like you know these legislations they also have daughters they also have wives they also have sisters I mean it's not just for them right it's it's for everyone it's for like, literally every woman in this country and it's so important how can you deny it but then they would say um, my the women in my family don't use internet they don't go out <laughs> they don't <laughs> they don't dress like that <laughs> बट सी ये है ना अब ये माइंड सेट चेंज करने के फिर आपको पब्लिक सर्विस मैसेजिंग चाहिए होगी और क्योंकि उनको भी तो रियलाइजेशन करवानी पड़ेगी कि भाई ये आपके घर में भी हो रहा है लाइक यू सेड दैट वुमेन शुड गेट यू नो कम टुगेदर डोंट यू थिंक वी शुड हैव अ मिक्स ग्रुप लाइक मेन शुड बी देयर एज़ वेल इट शुड इट शुड बी अ मिक्स ग्रुप फॉर श्योर बट आई फील लाइक वुमेन आल्सो नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड लाइक उनकी अपनी एक ग्रुप हो और फिर आप उसमें और लोगों को लाएं बिकॉज़ आई आल्सो फील लाइक I mean okay I know this is going to sound reverse sexism but I also feel like when there's when there's a man or two men or more men sometimes women just don't want to open up and the male's voice is way more dominant than the woman's yeah that's so true. it has to it has to be a mix somehow but it has so to be a balanced close thing. group of women and then a broader group yeah. where there's yeah. you know men and women both yeah. so that's yeah i mean i mean it's 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 a very grim situation and i keep wondering because, and uh, i i i am scared about young girls i mean obviously i've lived my life and lived mm-hmm. a very great life of 70s of pakistan which was 60s of pakistan so much freedom i mean if i when i tell my daughter or you know even the younger people mm-hmm. can't believe it that we could just roam around tarik road and other places in karachi alone I yep. could travel alone in a cab at that time. I still remember that I was traveling in a cab, and I have this habit of speaking to the driver. So I was just chatting with him, and I was mm-hmm. this was early eighties, and uh, then he, you know, diverted his cab and he stopped near a tea shop. I said, "Did you do what? Why are you drinking tea? I said, "I have never drunk tea before." He said, "You talk a lot, but you can't drink tea with me." I said, "You can't drink tea with me." I said, "You can't drink tea with me." I said, "You can't drink tea with me." <laughs> but i you know a lot of interesting conversation would happen mm-hmm. because i would ask kaha ke ho kya karte ho mm-hmm. you know bhi bachche kaha hai ye hai wo hai but then it all always 
कैन बिकॉज आई वॉज ऑब्वियसली वॉज यंग एट दैट टाइम एंड ही थॉट कि चलो मैं चाहे तो पी सकता हूँ मुझे जो इतनी देर बातें कर रही है तो मे बी शी हैज सम अदर इंटेंशन बट अ पाकिस्तान दैट वॉज देर इज नॉट हेयर नाउ आई मीन I mean, uh, even what it was ten years ago, it's so different. You know, I at least I would say maybe wow, seventeen uh, years ago or something, I could roam around in a sadar in shorts hmm. and like you know with a pixie cut or the lip piercing, and you know no one said anything. Now I would think twice. But that was Karachi, you know. I that was Karachi. That, that's always been because I remember my daughter telling me she grew up in Islamabad, and when she Went to Karachi. She was already eighteen, and then she mm-hmm. said, you know, "Mama, Karachi is a lot more liberal than yeah. uh, dress-wise, at least." Um, it is. It is. I, it I can is. go out in jeans and t-shirt, and you know, nobody actually looks at me. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that's changed now. Uh, that's it quite- has. It has, and it's very strange how it's changed. So, like you know, I would take a rickshaw to a lot of places uh, for work and everything. एंड उस वक्त लाइक मुझे अपने फोन का इतना वो नहीं होता था मैं हेडफोन तक आके सुन लेती थी आराम से पर ना एम जस्ट लाइक लाइक आई टू केयरफुल आई टू बी अवेयर कि लाइक यू नो कुछ को तो नहीं रहा कुछ आसपास तो नहीं है एंड यू नो समवन हु इज नेवर टेकन अ दुपट्टा नॉट एक्स दुपट्टा सो आई थिंक दैट फॉर मी वाज अ वेरी बिग चेंज लाइक मैं बेशक अभी ना लूं बट मेरे बैग में हमेशा रखा हुआ होता है कि एहतियात है मुझे जरूरत है पर्चेस की इतना पर्च एक्जेक्टली दैट्स सो या आई एम आई एम अ hopeful that things may change but uh, they need a lot of uh, effort mm-hmm. and a lot of courage and you know courage from women like you to make the change happen i mean you are doing a love you know wonderful job of doing Thank these you. podcasts and you know digging out facts behind the crime that mm-hmm. was sensationalized beyond its uh, reality actually so thank you so much tuba for to us and um, it was uh, <coughs> a, you know a different kind of perspective that we got from you so thank you no, no thank you for having me on and i'm looking forward to more episodes thank you thank you bye 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 <laughs>